Business activities pick up in parts of the country as nationwide protest enters day three. And federal government takes steps to address funding gap of $200 million in immunization programs. These and more on Panorama today, reaching you live from Abuja. I'm Zenret Dimun. Thanks for joining us. It is the third day in the, of, the, of the nationwide protest and more business outlets are back and open to customers along the Dutse Alaji Kubwa axis of the Federal Capital Territory. Correspondent Charles Alpha reports that black marketers are also back on the streets. At the time of filing this report, roads remained relatively free while security personnel were still mounting and keeping watch at strategic locations. Away from the popular beggar uh, runabout. If you look up there, that is the uh, beggar runabout, and there leads to the Wuset market. And we know that as at yesterday, some protesters who converged here wanted to break the security line to advance into the city center before uh, their activities were. Uh, repelled by security operatives that were present at uh, the runabout yesterday. So today we came to see for ourselves what it looks like. But from our assessment of what has happened here so far, it's been calm, it's been peaceful. Uh, security operatives, the civil defense corps, uh, the military, the police, and all other sister agencies of these security that I've mentioned uh, have been present here in order watching to see if there will be any kind of violence. But of course, we haven't seen anyone, any gathering at all. But what we can tell you right now is the fact that activities have picked up, business activities have picked up, taxi drivers and people who want to move from this particular place to other locations to be able to carry out their activities are all here doing their activities. We just couldn't uh, do this right now under the bridge because of uh, concerns there. So we had to move out to be able to. But if you are able to look at some of the pictures we capture, you will see some commuters and some passengers actually, you know, going about doing the activities. So far, this place is calm and nothing serious is happening here. No, no, no protests is uh, going on here. As a matter of fact, we haven't seen any gathering here. And so far, it's been cool and calm, and everything is just fine as at this. Thank you, Charles, for the update. Meanwhile, it's been business as usual in Umwahia, the capital city of Abia State, since the commencement of the nationwide protest, with people going about their lawful engagements without apprehension. Chika Kori, who has been monitoring activities, reports that the city has not recorded any kind of protest or violence so far. And similarly, Enugu has continued to enjoy calm and peaceful atmosphere as the nationwide protest enters day three. There is free vehicle and human traffic on the roads, while many business premises are open for their day-to-day -day businesses. Borno state government has reiterated its commitment to avert a recurrence of suicide attacks on soft targets, even as it condemns recent attacks in Goza and Kodongu local government areas. 
Governor Baba Gana Umara Zulum re-echoed the position of his administration when he visited the victims of Kauri attack at the Medjugorje Specialist Hospital. Mohamed Goni reports that the governor also announced the lift of the 24-hour curfew from today, 6 in the morning. Kauri suicide attack occurred barely a month after the Goza incident, which claimed the lives of innocent citizens. The governor, who sympathized with the victims at the Maiduguri Specialist Hospital and appreciated the officials of the hospital, International Committee of the Red Cross and the State Emergency Management Agency for the Timely Response said, government will take all necessary steps, including ban on the use of urea for agricultural purpose. Even yesterday during the uh, protest, you know, we are witnessed some explosive in the town. Uh, this is a worrisome phenomenon and we must do something. If the usage of fertilizers will bring uh, such problems. I think there is a need for us to review the policy of Borno State government as regards the utilization of urea fertilizer in Borno State. Because we have an alternative. We have a wet blended fertilizers. On the protests which turned violent, necessitating imposition of curfew, the governor also expressed need to check excesses of some peaceless people using teenagers for their selfish aim. Over 90 percent of the protesters are children and it is unfortunate that most of them don't have parents here or they don't have even guardians and unless something is being done we shall not get rid of this problem professor zilm warned that government will not hesitate to deal with anyone found in bridge of law and order last wednesday kauri attack had claimed at least 20 lives and many sustaining various degrees of injury in maiduguri mohammed goni nt news and away from the protest, the federal government is undertaking bold economic policies to propel the country's economy out of the downturns occasioned by multiple shocks in the global economy. President Bola Tinibu, represented by Vice President Kashim Shetima, stated this when he declared open the 2024 African Caucus meeting in Abuja. State House correspondent Abdurrahman Jibrila reports. We invite you in this meeting to see the African market of financial institutions as key channels for enhanced domestic resource mobilization. This meeting with representatives from all Africa member countries of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank Group aims to address key economic issues facing the continent with a focus on promoting trade within Africa to foster sustainable development. Nigeria called for cooperation among African countries to tackle their shared economic challenges and take advantage of the opportunities. This focus offers a vital platform for us to experience both partnerships and chart the collective path of Africa's story. It's one of the areas creativity and hope. Indeed, we have made significant strides in recent years with many of our nations achieving remarkable economic growth social progress and political stability. Facilitating intra-African trade, catalyst for sustainable development in Africa, countries on the continent must take necessary measures to translate opportunities in natural resources and human capital into growth, innovation and collaboration. It's time to tackle the root causes and much of that lies in the international financial architecture. Access to our economies must be had to long-term concessional funding. Others have had it, and it is Africa's turn to be given that right to grow and to prosper for its people. We have the opportunity to drive change, and by doing so, progress towards a vibrant and sustainable future. The role of regional trading blocks play in getting member countries to synchronize their reforms and investments necessary to boost intra continental trade. While these strategies are recommendable, it is important that we move beyond theoretical discussions and actively translate them into tangible actions. The demographics of Africa present tremendous economic potential that must be cultivated to take advantage particularly of intra-African um, trade opportunities and to transform and develop our economies and our region. This is also an opportunity to brainstorm on major challenges and strategies for fostering inclusive growth 
and sustainable development in Africa, reflecting the collective commitment of member countries to moving the continent forward economically. In Abuja, Abraham Jibrila, NTA News. Also, the federal government and key players in health security are discussing means of addressing the funding gap of about $200 million in Nigeria's immunization program to reduce the risk of vaccine shortage, which is a threat to citizens' well-being, especially children. This was the agenda at a multi-stakeholder forum on optimizing immunization financing in Nigeria initiated by the Vaccine Network for Disease Control in Abuja. That report will come in our subsequent bulletins. Now, sequel to concerns on legitimacy of certificates from some institutions in neighboring countries, the federal government reaffirms education, uh, dedication to upholding the validity of certificates earned from accredited and recognized institutions. Minister of State Education Dr. Yusuf Tanko Sununu reemphasizes the need for a robust education system to nurture individuals with strong critical thinking skills, knowledge and ethical values towards national development. Dr. Sununu clarifies that the recent suspension of evaluation and accreditation for degrees from neighboring countries does not affect certificates from duly accredited institutions as long as a certificate adheres to established standards and is valid for employment, further education or other purposes. Addressing the challenges posed by global economic crisis, including fluctuations in Naira dollar exchange, Dr. Sununu assures that the ministry remains committed to timely scholarship payments and effective budget management. Additionally, he notes that the revised Student Loan Act underscores the president's commitment to expanding access to quality education and providing comprehensive support to students, including funding for skills development. President of the National Association of Nigerian Students in the Diaspora, Nancy, Juwon Ojo Fayemi, highlights some challenges they face, including unforeseen medical expenses, discrepancies in scholarships and accommodation shortages, as he calls for intervention and support. Fayemi advocates the recognition of Nancy as a key stakeholder in resolving these issues. Meanwhile, the federal government has established a nine-member technical committee on teachers' training and support, paving the way for a transformative overhaul of the nation's education system. Minister of Education Professor Tahir Maman said this, is, said this in a meeting with UNESCO representative Mr. Abdurrahmani Diallo. The committee's key responsibilities will include evaluating and enhancing current policies on teachers' training programs, as well as designing and implementing new modules with focus on skills development, which in turn will deliver quality education to Nigerians. Mr. Diallo said UNESCO is committed to advancing sustainable development goals and address key education policies noting that they will collaborate with the ministry to come up with a viable blueprint on teachers' training. This report will come subsequently. We'll take a break now. The panorama continues shortly. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us and still on education. Having quality education, especially from the basic level, has been identified as the foundation for which one's education can be banked on for a peaceful and prosperous society. Haruna Mohammed reports that these are the comments of resource persons at the first Kaduna North Local Government Education Summit held in Kaduna. Kaduna North Local Government is setting the pace, giving education the well-deserved attention. This summit with the team, basic education in Kaduna North journey so far and the way forward is with stakeholders from the educational sector geared towards uplifting the public schools in the council. Using empirical facts and figure, one after the other, stakeholders applaud the council chairman, Mutar Baloni, for bridging the gap between private and public schools in the council. The local government council, they have tried their best 
by implementing the promotion of standing provision of the, of the teachers. In any position, must come with something in his mind that this is what I'm coming in to do for my people. Mokhtar Baloni described education as the bedrock of the development of any society where the basic schools is a foundation which needs to be solidified. We are working assiduously towards ensuring that we allocate all necessary resources within our limited scope to ensure that uh, we effectively deliver. And um, this summit is a testament of what has been done. So haven't extracted the journey so far. The first Kaduna North Education Summit is expected to not only improve the standard of education of the council, but the state and Nigeria as a whole. In Kaduna, I am Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. Minister of Defense Mohammed Badaru Abubakar has commended the bilateral relations between Nigeria and China that has grown significantly over the years, with both nations working together to pursue common interests in addressing common challenges. The minister gave the commendation during the 97th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese People's Liberation Army at Chinese Embassy Abuja. He noted that the robust partnership, particularly in the area of military cooperation, training and technology transfers have been critical to both nations with shared efforts to build a stronger and more capable military institution. Nigerian Environmental Standards and Regulatory Enforcement Agency, NESRA, has reiterated government's commitment to protecting Nigeria's rich biodiversity and natural heritage. Director General NESRA, Dr. Innocent Bariko, stated this during the official unveiling of the sculpture of an elephant crafted from ashes and dust of incinerated pangolin scales and pulverized elephant tusks christened Giwa Statue of Renewed Hope by Minister of State for Environment, Dr. Isiak Adekunle Salako, on behalf of the federal government. Nina Daniels was at the National Park, Abuja, and now reports. This might just be an elephant sculpture, but it is a powerful symbol which marks a significant turning point in Nigeria's efforts to combat the trafficking of endangered wildlife, a task that is so dear to the National Environmental Standards and Regulatory Enforcement Agency, NESRA, as it is for the federal government. We also know that uh, recently we signed a bilateral agreement with Cameroon because the route from Cameroon to Nigeria is also a transit border for the smuggling of these wildlife parts. So we already signed an agreement with Cameroon and we're cooperating, sharing information to ensure that we discourage these practices. Beyond that is also the fact that we need to begin to convince our people that we live in a cohabiting world and that all these um, species are part of the ecosystem. The unveiling ceremony brought together stakeholders from the National Park, National Bar Safety Agency, National Forestry Research Institute, among others, who were reminded of the need for synergy to curb the excesses of illegal poachers, while calling on customs service to help intercept and stop illegal trafficking of endangered species. So you find out that the Nigerian Customs Service are uh, being in the ports, most of the time are the ones that do the first seizure. Sometimes when they see illegal uh, wildlife parts or illegal animals, even sometimes live animals that are being uh, smuggled out. They have the responsibility to inform us. Nezra reiterated its determination to sustain the temple in enforcing all illegal poaching, as well as keep Nigeria's part of the bargain on all treaties regarding curbing illegal poaching. In Abuja, Minna Daniels, NTA News. The Sultan of Sokoto and President General Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Muhammad Sa'ad Abubakar, urges Muslims in Nigeria to start looking for the new moon of Safar, 1446 AH tomorrow. A statement signed by the Chairman Advisory Committee on Religious Affairs, Sultanate Council, Sokoto, Professor Sambo Wali Junaidu, says Sunday, 4th August 2024, is equivalent to 29th Muharram 
1446AH. It therefore calls on Muslim Ummah to start looking for the new crescent and report the sighting to the nearest district or village head for onward communication to the Sultan. Enugu has continued to enjoy a calm and peaceful atmosphere as the nationwide protest enters day three. There is free vehicular and human traffic on the roads while many business premises are open for their day-to-day -day businesses. Okay, we hear our correspondent at Lagos has an update on the nationwide protest. Let's hear what she has for us. Hello, Hingino. Right, thank you. Thank you, you Zaret. Here in Lagos, the atmosphere is calm and peaceful. Business activities have, uh, have continued to pick up. And the protesters gathered at um, the Freedom Park. So they didn't enter the park. They stayed outside. Today, they said they have chosen to stay outside. They remain peaceful. Though there was a mild drama when they insisted that they wanted to move beyond the designated point. But the police and other security agents uh, did not allow them to move beyond. There, there's this cordiality between the protesters and the police. They, I, I noticed that the protesters listened to their leaders because when they were insisting, the police was trying to block them. They refused. But when their leaders came on board and spoke to them, they all calmed down. Okay, Hingino, um, what about business activities in Lagos? What's happening? Okay, we'll join Hingino much later for updates and maybe other um, correspondents all over the country. And that's it on Panorama today. Thanks for sharing your time with us.